Let's get CoMoDB installed and then we'll run through the basics. Then we'll dig a little bit deeper and run through my use case. I'm at the CoMoDB get started page. First, let's do pip install and it's done. Now we'll declare the Quoma client, create a new code block, run it. It's fine. Let's keep going. Create a collection. A collection is basically the vector database. I'll keep the name the way it is. Control enter to run it. Okay, we have a vector database. Now let's add some stuff to it. We're calling collection.add to add text to the database. We're passing in three lists. The three lists are actually correlated. So the first sentence corresponds to the first element of the metadata list and corresponds to the first element of the ID list. Essentially, we're inserting two entries into the database. Notice that we don't have to specify how the embedding is going to be done. Coma DB takes care of it behind the scenes. So it's going to convert the sentences into embeddings for us. Metadata is just information that's going to help us after we query the database and find the document. What we can do is also add to it. I can say uh, this comes from page, page one of whatever my source is. The ID can be whatever unique identifier we pass it. Now let's run it. When you run it for the first time, it's going to download a large language model for us. It's using this one or mini LM to do the embeddings. Okay, I think it's done. Now we can query the database. This is what I'm doing a semantic search for. And the second parameter limits how many results come back. Since there's only two in there, it doesn't matter at the moment. Run this. Let me print the results. We can see that the sentence, this is a document, is semantically closer to our query compared to the second sentence. We can tell based on the distance. The first one is um, a distance of 0.7 and the second one is a bit further away. And we can see that the other uh, information also came back along with the query. So we can make use of this information in our application later on. Notice that embedding is none by default. It doesn't return the embedding for us. That's something that we have to turn on. So we can do that by adding another parameter call include and then pass in the stuff that we want to be returned. So embeddings is here. Run it again. Now you can see that embeddings are returned, but usually looking at a bunch of numbers isn't going to be very useful. So let's get rid of it. Okay. All right, that was the basics. Let's dig a little bit deeper by looking at one of my use cases. This is my restaurant menu page. Down here, I have a search bar here. All it does is a keyword match search. The problem with that is if the customer types in something like shrimp, well, there's nothing that says shrimp, but if they type in ponds, they're all ponds. So I'm wondering if using a vector database and doing semantic search is gonna solve this problem. Let's try it out. I'm gonna copy in a CSV file and it contains only two columns, the item ID and the name of the dish. So that's what I'm going to load into the vector database. Let me go to the top of the document, create a new code block, paste in some basic code that reads the CSV file into a bunch of lines. And then I'm going to use those lines to fill in the three lists that the collection.add function expects. I'm looping through each line and skipping the header. I'm putting column two, the item's name, into documents. And I'm putting the item ID into metadata. And I'm just passing in an ID, start it at one, and just keep incrementing. Let's run this. Let's check it. Okay, document has all this stuff. So metadata and ID should be okay. Okay, back down at the Quoma database. Uh, I wanna mention that currently the database is in memory only. 
I'll show you later how to persist that onto disk. Now I will replace this with those three variables that I declared up there. Before I run this, I want to recreate this database in the new code block. I'm going to do the client.delete collection, pass it the name of my collection, run it. Okay. Now we create the collection, add my items into the database. This is going to take a few seconds to do the embeddings. Okay. Now I can query the database. Let me increase the uh, number of results to five. Now, if I search for pawns, let's just look at documents, make it easier to see. All right, searching for pawns, I get five dishes that contains pawns. Now, what about shrimp? It did return dishes with pawns in it, but for some reason, it thinks sesame ball is the closest match. This is kind of weird. Maybe by switching to another language model, it will get better results. So let's give that a shot. Back on Chroma page, I'm going to the embedding page. We can see that by default, it's using the all mini LM. We can switch that, but first let me import that. Changing the embedding function requires us to make a new database. So let me uh, start over, clear everything from memory. We'll add the embedding function in here, run this. We can use this function to switch to a different model. Let me copy that. This is something we have to do before declaring the collection. So we're calling embedding functions dot sentence transformer embedding function, passing it the model name. We want to switch this one. I'll follow this link here and then go to pre-trained models. Here's a list of models that we can use for free. You can see that uh, the all mini LM is about middle of the world. Uh, this is sorted by how good the model is. So let me grab the one on top, copy it, switch this out. We have to pass the embedding function, so we pass it in by pointing embedding function to the variable we just declared up here. Now let's try running it. We see an error that says no module name sentence transformer. I think this is something we need to install. Let me go back to the expert page. And since I have Conda, I'm going to run this command. Bring my terminal back, run the command. Okay, that took a few minutes, but it's installed now. Let's try to run this again. Looks like it's downloading some supporting files. Okay, collection created. Let's add the data back. Um, since I reset the whole memory, I have to load the CSV files again. Okay. Now we can add them to the collection. Since this is a bigger model, it's going to take a little bit longer than before. Okay, this is the moment of truth. Am I going to get something different this time? Let's look for shrimp. Hey, it's better. It's not giving me the sesame ball. Everything that came back is a pond dish. This is good. Looks like this model is uh, better for my use case. Uh, let me try a few more things. Let's see. We have a dish that has salt and pepper. Okay. Now what if the customer uses salt and pepper? That's good. Okay. We got something called donut in a Chinese restaurant for some reason. Okay. Here's our donut. Now what if we spell it this way? Still got donut. This is good. What about misspellings? Um, for Miss Sally, I don't even know if this is correct or not. Yeah. Good, it's able to find the for Miss Sally. Okay, you get the idea. Looks like doing semantic search is going to be a good enhancement to uh, just doing keyword search. So I might consider actually implementing it. If this embedding is still not good enough, 
We can actually use OpenAI's models to do the embeddings. It might be even better, but I'm not going to do that in this video. This involves signing up with OpenAI, um, and uh, I think they charge for embeddings as well. Before I go, I mentioned uh, persisting the database before rather than working in memory. Let me go back to go to their usage guide. This is how we can persist the database. Let's go back up here. Actually, um, let's make a new one. Let's call it factor DB. Run it. And here's the folder that it just created. And it looks like it's holding a SQLite database. Okay. If you learned something today, please consider subscribing, liking the video, uh, drop a comment if you have questions, and I'll catch you next time.